you're passing your holidays in Tuscany and you want to visit Florence on a quick half day tour or you're here for business, you don't have enough time but you don't want to miss the most important sites, here is for you a ready itinerary for a half day tour in Florence. I will guide you through the most important squares of the city, the squares of power through which you can learn about the Florentine history. Come with me and uh, let's discover Florence together. The history of Florence started here in today's Piazza della Repubblica. Here was located the Forum of the Roman Florencia, the first settlement here in the Valley of Arno established by the Romans during the 50s before Christ. With the uh, foundation of this new city, the Romans wanted to take control over this territory. The plots of land in Florencia were given to the veterans of the Roman army. During the Roman times, the foundation of a new city uh, would start with a religious ritual called inauguratio. The priests would come and start from the um, definition of the directions north-south, east-west, and he would trace the first streets, Decumanus Massimus, that runs from east to west, and Cardo Massimo, that runs from north to south, where those two streets cross, uh, they uh, would establish the forum, the most important square in the town, and next to the forum they would build the most important temple dedicated to Jupiter. Here in Piazza della Repubblica you can still see the traces of this ancient urbanistic system of Florence. Therefore, today's Piazza della Repubblica represented the political and the religious heart of the Roman city, with the Forum and the Temple of Jupiter. With the fall of the Roman Empire, when the balances of power drastically changed, the space of the Forum was transformed in a simple market square. Today's um, setting of the square is a fruit of a requalification and um, happened during the second half of the 19th century when Florence was the capital of the Kingdom of Italy. A few steps from Piazza della Repubblica you will find Piazza Duomo with the Cathedral Santa Maria del Fiore, the Bell Tower and the Baptistry dedicated to St. John the Baptist. This is the religious center of Florence, but also the place of the manifestation of power during the Middle Ages. Why? After the fall of the Roman Empire, the period that followed was full of conflict and insecurity. Uh, during the following centuries, the two new centers of power were created. The papal power in Rome and the imperial power. But starting from the 13th century, the Italian city-states started to fight for the independence from those two powers, both from the Pope and from the Emperor. In Florence, the Republican communal government was chosen through elections uh, among the representatives of the professional corporations. How to justify and legitimize the power in an era when people believe that power comes from God himself? Uh, both the Pope, the Emperor, but also the kings used to rule during the Middle Ages because they were chosen by divinity and their office was consecrated. This is why the Italian city-states uh, used to choose for themselves the figure of patron saints who became uh, the guardians of their power over the dominated territories. Venice chose St. Mark, Siena, the Virgin Mary, and Florence, St. John the Baptist. This is the reason why the baptistry dedicated to St. John the Baptist became the most important temple in Florence. And the city invested huge amount of money for its internal decoration. The dome of the baptistry was covered with the mosaics. The, uh, during the centuries uh, 
three pairs of bronze doors were made for the baptistry and inside the people of Florence positioned a beautiful silver altar. The Florentine Cathedral Santa Maria del Fiore that today stands uh, in, front of, in front of the baptistry uh, was built starting from 1296. Uh, this immense church was supposed to rep uh, represent the richness of Florence but it was the baptistry that was a symbol of power of uh, the Republic. This is why the cathedral until today is quite empty inside. Don't lose your time during your quick walk in the city uh, in the queue in front of the church. It is worth entering the cathedral only if you have a half day um, and you can visit also the other monuments in the square. The baptistry, the archaeological area under the church with the rest of the Church of Santa Reparata and the Cathedral Museum. Via dei Calzaioli is today one of the main streets of the center of Florence that brings you from Piazza Duomo to the political part of the city, Piazza della Signoria. The square is dominated by the immense building of the Palazzo Vecchio, the headquarter of the Republican government transformed during the 16th century by the Medici family into their first ducal palace. The construction of the palace started in 1299 following the project by Arnolfo di Cambio. Later on, in 1350, the Republican government decided to build a loggia next to the palace, a place where to held public assemblies and public ceremonies. Uh, the Loggia dei Signori, later called Loggia dei Lanzi, was built between 1378 and 1382 and the square opened between the two buildings became the heart of the political center of uh, the city. Here, every day, a political battle was fought. Um, fought between the battle between the sustainers of the Republican government and those who favored the Medici family. The family uh, who from the 15th century wanted to take over uh, the power in the state. Starting from the 15th century, the works of art displayed here in the square started to participate in this harsh competition. The first protector of the Republican freedoms placed in front of Palazzo dei Signori was Donatello's Judith. The Medici family commissioned the sculpture in the 1450s. Initially, the work was placed in the garden of their private palace, Palazzo Medici, and served as a fountain. The statue represents Judith, a heroine from the Old Testament, who saved her people from the attack of the Assyrians uh, by killing the commander of the enemy troops, Holofernes. The statue was stolen by the Florentines in 1494 during the violent plundering of the Medici palace and the expulsion of the family from Florence. The statue of Judith and Holofernes was removed from the garden of the palace and placed in front of Palazzo dei Signori. Symbolized in this woman's figure defeating a strong opponent, the Florentines immediately saw a weak Florentine Republic struggling with the Medici. This is why Judith, a heroine symbolizing liberation from one's enemies, became the first Republican statue to be placed in this symbolic location. In 1501, the authorities of the Florentine Cathedral asked a young Florentine sculptor, Michelangelo Buonarroti, that he finished a piece of marble already started by other artists destined to become the refiguration of the King David. Michelangelo immediately started to work on this uh, commission and the statue was finished in just three years, in 1504. Initially, it was uh, planned that David was placed at the top of the roofs uh, of the uh, apse of the Florentine Cathedral, but when Michelangelo revealed his David to the Florentine public, the city remained astonished because of the revolutionary vision of this a biblical hero. Michelangelo transformed his David in a Greek 
hero. The, um, David is shown as a mature man, completely naked, only with his sling passing behind his back. Uh, his perfect body is sculpted with the um, amazing attention towards the anatomical detail. It communicates strength, security and fairness. Uh, very quickly the Florentine people attributed to David, just as uh, they did with Judith, the uh, new meaning. The statue became the symbol of the Florentine Republic, the incarnation of the virtue, strength and furor uh, that were guarding the republican freedom. The nudity of David was the symbol of the moral perfection and the beauty of uh, David's body was underlining the humanistic value of the dignity of man. The people of Florence decided to place David in Piazza della Signoria in the spot previously occupied by Donatello's Judith. The pro-republican meaning of this statue was clear to all. On 12th of August 1530, after a long siege, the uh, Republic of Florence surrendered and the power returned into the hands of the Medici family, nominated two years later the Dukes of Florence. In 1537, the Duke Alexander was assassinated and the power passed in the hands of a 17 years old Cosimo de' Medici. Despite his young age, Cosimo was a very ambitious ruler and he immediately started to uh, put in action a plan for a reinforcement of the uh, duchy. Next, uh, together with his political action, Cosimo started to promote a, a real propaganda campaign uh, aimed at a promotion of his image as a powerful and victorious duke. The commission for the statue of Perseus presented by the duke to Benvenuto Cellini is a part of this uh, political propaganda. Uh, the uh, Perseus uh, it's an answer to, to the Republican statues in the square, the Judith and Michelangelo's David. The work represents this young mythological hero who won against Medusa. He's naked, he walks over the body of his enemy, he holds his sword and with his left hand he shows to everybody the head of Medusa. Symbolically, Perseus represents the Duke Cosimo and his strong power over the territory of the Duchy. Behind Piazza della Signoria you will find the Uffizi Gallery, today one of the most important museums in Italy. The gallery hosts today the major masterpieces of Italian painting, but the building of the gallery was built starting from 1560 as the center of the Medici's ducal power in Tuscany. Here in fact were located the head offices of the administrators of the uh, Medi Medici's duchy. The square brings you towards the river and towards the Ponte Vecchio. From Piazza della Signoria, you can cross the Arno River with the Ponte Vecchio. The Ponte Vecchio is the only bridge uh, that survived the destructions of um, August 1944 caused by the Nazi uh, Germans. This bridge was built during the 14th century as a market bridge and initially the shops on the bridge were butchers and uh, you could buy meat on, uh, in those shops. The location of the meat market on the bridge was very important in the medieval city from the point of view of hygienics and sanitary security. In an era without antibiotics, a meat could easily become a source of contagion. So the butchers were asked to throw to the river all the unsold remaining parts of the meat 
and the river used to clean the city. The fate of the bridge would start changing with the rise of the ducal dynasty of the Medici family. First, the Medici built above the shops the corridor linking the Uffizi building with the Pitti Palace. Uh, later on, they asked the butchers to move to the market square in today's Piazza della Repubblica and the shops on the bri bridge were assigned to the goldsmiths. Following the Vasari corridor, you can cross the river. After the river, on the left, you will see a little square with a column and the church dedicated to Santa Felicita. It's a very ancient place of the Christian cult, dating back to the 5th century. Inside the church, on the right, as soon as you enter, you will find a magnificent Caponi chapel with a beautiful deposition by Pontormo. A rare example of a Renaissance artwork which is still located in its original uh, collocation. If from Piazza Santa Felicita you continue straight on Via Guicciardini, you arrive to the magnificent Pitti Palace. The palace and the bar garden behind it was bought by the wife of the Duke of Florence, Cosimo I, Eleonora di Toledo in 1549. From this moment on, the palace became the representative residence for the Grand Dukes and the model for other residences for the rulers of Europe. Uh, during the centuries, the palace was few times enlarged and the Boboli Garden became the representative garden for the court of the Medici family. During the Kingdom of Italy, when Florence became the capital of the new state, uh, the palace became the royal palace for the King of Italy, Victor Emmanuel II. Here you can conclude your half-day tour in Florence. If you want to discover the history of Florence during a half-day walking tour, contact me. I will be happy to organize your guided itineraries in the town.